Welcome to Good Shepherd United Church of Christ, Slatington. As we gather virtually, we long to be in relationship with one another. We sense our very humanity depends upon the depth of our relationships. Yet during this pandemic, we feel estranged, cut off from all that which is most vital. Our hope here at Good Shepherd is for an awakening, despite our social distancing, that we might connect with one another in new and hope-filled ways. Come join us in learning what these new hopes and ways might be. Let us listen to these words of a hymn entitled, God of Our Life. strengthen and guide us. We know you are with us and will bless us. Help us to open our senses and spirits to all you are and all the ways you reveal yourself to us. We thank you for this opportunity and we are ready to begin. Amen. Let us begin by hearing the words as found in the scripture Genesis 32. The Hebrew Testament, as found in Genesis chapter 32, verses 22 through 31, Jacob wrestles at Peniel. The same night he got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise, everything that he had. Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Peniel, 
limping because of his hip. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Amen. Let us pray. Holy and gracious one, speak now to our hearts that they might be enlivened, that we might continue to let your seed firmly take root, and that we might grow in faith and in service to your people everywhere. For this we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I think of what's going on in our world today, and in light of this scripture, and for those of you who are familiar, you'll understand that this is Jacob who's returning back home. He's returning to a place that he has not been for quite some time. In fact, when he left, there was a, dis, uh, a bit of disturbance because he had, in actuality, stolen his brother's birthright. So he's going back to face an angry brother, not sure what to expect. Well, we're going through a time of facelessness where we wear face masks and we are social distancing and we are being quarantined in homes and not being able to live our lives to the fullest. And hopefully, not too far off into the future, we'll be gathering again and we're going to see one another and we're going to see each other face to face. And in that time, a lot of us have experienced things over the last six months that we never dreamt that we would face. Some of us have lost loved ones to this pandemic. Some of us have lost our jobs due to the effects of social distancing. Some of us are struggling to figure out how to do our jobs uh, and maintain uh, a semblance of relationships with family, friends, neighbors. All these things have transformed us and changed us and when we come out of this, we're going to be a little different. Just as Jacob, after wrestling with this angel in the evening, is going to have uh, a difference. He's going to walk with a bit of a limp because the angel hit his hip. And so he's going to always be changed because of this experience. But in this experience, he trusts God and he follows through and he goes back and as I sort of ruin the story, he is embraced by his brother and all is right. I pray that we as a nation, we as a wor the world, we as a community of people, regardless of how small or large we view it, that we might embrace one another when all this is over. Even though we will be changed and we can never be the same as before, we might continue to listen to God, trust God's word, and be God's people to reach out to all those who may not understand, may not think like we do, may not look like we do, may not speak like we do, but that we might recognize that we are all created in the image of the loving God and that we have been blessed and we will bless others because of it. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we do this, I ask that we might be in a mode of prayer as we pray for uh, these various communities that I mentioned. So let us go to God in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we pray for our world, that there might be enough food and clean water to provide the basic necessities for all, that there might be peace and security in countries struggling for human rights and freedoms that there might be a discovery for a vaccine to cure COVID-19 and end this world pandemic. We pray, O oh God, for our country, that there might be peace and order as people's voices are heard for justice and mercy, that there be understanding and acceptance of people who are different politically, socially, economically, spiritually, ethnically, so we might recognize you, O oh God, in the face of strangers. We pray, gracious one, for our parish, that there be healing and wholeness for the following members and friends in the hospital, home convalescing, or those preparing for procedures, for Janet, Kristen, Sylvia, Marge, Darlene, Mary, Alice, Joe, Floyd, Jeff, Mary, 
Mason, Frank, Debbie, Lisa, Allison, and Alan. Lord, we pray for those grieving the death of loved ones, the family of Nicholas DeLong, and the family of Sanit. We pray, gracious one, for individuals who are homeless, hungry, battling addiction, who are facing affliction, the unemployed, the voiceless, the depressed, the lonely, the abused, the neglected. We pray also, gracious one, for those of our parish who are homebound, Dolores, Mary, Sandra, Catherine, Kay, and Tilly. We pray for those of our parish celebrating birthdays this week, Nick, Alexandra, and Kelsey. We pray for those of our parish celebrating anniversaries this week, Keith and Sally, Richard and Marilyn, and Todd and Julie. Gracious one, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. We are appreciative to all of you who have continued to send in your financial support for the mission of Good Shepherd. Even though we are not meeting in person, expenses continue <coughs> for our mortgage, payroll, utilities, and other expenses. For those of you who are uh, or who feel able to send your support through the mail or electronically, we would encourage you to do so with joyful hearts. If you would rather have someone from the consistory stop by your home and pick up your financial gifts, you can contact the church office. Our mission is to open the gospel to all God's people, both near and far, and we thank you for prayerfully considering what you are able to afford. Let us, in anticipation of these gifts, pray our prayer of dedication. For the ways we can see, feel, touch, smell, speak of, and taste your kindness and generosity, O God, we give thanks and rejoice. Bless this giving, we pray, that it might become an encounter with you beyond this moment and place. We thank you for being willing to wrestle with us, and we praise you for showing us a new day. Amen. And so as we go forth, in your face is the face of God. Go now and let it shine. In your hand is the hand of God. Go now and open it in sharing and caring. In your heart is the heart of God. Let it break open in compassion. In your life is the life of God. Live it with joyful thanksgiving. 